In life's journey, we must seek to reflect, learn, and grow. Welcome to the Road to Rediscovery with your host, Aubrey Johnson. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Road to Rediscovery. I'm your host, Aubrey Johnson. The Road to Rediscovery is about reflecting on past life lessons to learn and grow from them and to take it to the next level and help others who are struggling through dark times. My special guest has had an extensive career in law enforcement, and I'm sure that has brought him through so many different journeys to where he is today. He is now a business owner. He owns his own business, (laughs) as well as uh, the host of the Man Up to Greatness podcast. And we're going to talk about just the journey through each of these endeavors, how it makes him into the man he is today, and past life lessons, uh, ways of growth, ways of improvement. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Mr. Reginald Dillard. Reginald, how are you doing today, man? Oh, thank you so much, man. Thank you, Ari, for having me on the show. I'm feeling good down here in the southern states of Georgia. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a little, little wet, it was cold at one time. Now it's getting a little warmer. We had, we had a few snow flurries Christmas Eve, but it's right. it quickly went away. But yeah, man, I'm doing good, brother. But thank you for having me. Gotcha. Oh, we reciprocate for sure. I appreciate you being on the show, man. So uh, speaking of Georgia and so mm-hmm. forth, uh, can, can you share with the listeners you know, just, just where you're from, your upbringing. Um, are you originally from Georgia? I am a Georgia boy all day, every day. Born and raised in Georgia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. I was, uh, <laughs> I was born in a small town in south, deep, deep, deep south of Georgia called Thomasville, Georgia. It's right on mm. the line of uh, Florida, uh, right above Tallahassee. Uh, yeah, yeah. My mom's side is from there. And my dad met my mom there and he, he was in the military and the Navy and he's from Kansas and they met there and man, I swear, you know, I swear I originated from. So I was born there, but I was raised in ATL. So I'm kind of, I got a little, I got a, I got the ATL swag, the city swag with a little country boy, yeah. you know, style. So. Oh man, hundred percent. That's a, that's, a, that's a perfect blend right there, brother. That's yes, a sir. perfect, perfect blend. <laughs> you know, uh, I hold Georgia close to my heart uh, because that is where my mother is from. Oh. Um, and, uh, and she was born in the ATL and then uh, the family moved to Augusta. And so uh, she has a large family, had uh, eight sisters, one brother, and uh wow. yeah and so um you know as as everyone you know her siblings grown and moved out and everything um anywhere from uh atlanta georgia to augusta to harlem mm-hmm. georgia um albany macon mm-hmm. all those different parts uh, our relatives on my mother's side is spread out there and it, as a child in our summers, we would spend summers in Georgia and uh, we would always go to Augusta, but we made a tour of Georgia the whole two and a half months I was there, man. I mean, we'd go to, we'd go to Atlanta, all, you know, like three or four cars, then we'd caravan down to Albany, then go over to Mm -hmm. Macon, Mm -hmm. you know, and and so, uh, and, and like you, I'm a military brat. In fact, both my parents were in the military. My mom, uh, after graduating from Lucy Laney High School. <laughs> Lucy Laney um, High School. Man. Yeah, Lucy Laney High School. That's how far back she goes that I go, Whoa. right? Wow. Yeah, she she joined the Army and met my father in New Jersey. And, you know, as they say, the rest is history. I didn't mean to ramble on like that, man. Yeah, I just that's fine, saw man. some parallels between you and I that, yeah. uh, you know, that we have in common here. So, uh yeah, Georgia, man. Well, well, I'm I'm digging Georgia. Love the peaches. Love the music, and uh, it, it's something about those rainy nights in Georgia. It's not just the cliche that you hear in the songs, but there's mm-hmm. there's a true spirit behind that. I feel mm-hmm. at least mm-hmm. from my experience growing up. It is. Yeah. It, it's, it's 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 when it rains in Georgia. I mean, <laughs> Georgia get lots of rain, and when it yeah. rains in Georgia, man, it's mm-hmm. it's it's a different type of thing. Um, oh, for sure. It's different, bro. <laughs> you know, you just got yeah, to, yeah. if you're not used to that climate, you're not used to, to, to you got to think about, if you're not from Georgia, and mm-hmm. most people now that has moved to Atlanta, or well, there's a lot of people that has moved to Atlanta that's not from Georgia, or that's or not originally from Georgia. That's so right. uh, it's so many, it's, it's really hard to find original Georgians that should just go deep in the country and stuff. But 
in the city area, majority of people are not from not from Atlanta area or Georgia. So uh, yeah, Georgia man, you know we get all types of weather. We get the snow, we get the cold, <laughs> we get the yeah. humidity, we get the mm-hmm. dry heat like you have in Cali. We get humidity, you may even have in the jungle. We get the rain, mm-hmm. we get the snow every now and then. We get the freezing <laughs> temperatures. You know we might get a little tornado here and there. We got a little hurricane right. winds. We get everything. You know we get so, you know we kind of yeah. in the center of uh, of most climates that people you know are are, are are used to but you know you gotta be you know you gotta be able to adjust and adapt to georgia weather man but it's nice once you get here man and yeah and see the people and and see the diversity mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. atlanta area and atlanta atlanta area is, is itself because it's real it's real uh as, as i say uh minority driven so right right you know and it's real yeah, cultural my- yeah, for sure. My sister lived there for about four years uh, back in the '90s, and um, and this was around the time the uh, the Olympics came to uh, mm-hmm. Atlanta. And uh, me and a coworker went down there, stayed with my sister, and then you know from there just just did the whole Olympic thing, you know. And uh, um, and 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 of course there are people from other countries there, and it was a total you know melting pot. But even without that, you know, there's a lot of diversity. Uh, Atlanta's considered an international city, and mm-hmm. uh, and 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 you could see a lot of businesses uh, minority driven in Atlanta. So, uh, man, I appreciate you sharing that with us for sure, man. No so, uh, what got you going into law enforcement as you were growing up? What what was life growing up for Reginald? Um, and and I know you know you said your father was was in uh, was in the military. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know if there was some influence there when it came to law enforcement, uh, and I mean influenced by you know just uh, just watching your father and and seeing. But but what drove you into that direction of law enforcement? Well, um, when I was a when I was younger, I remember telling my father um, I was wanted to be a was it a lawyer? I think it was a lawyer when I was younger. Okay. Um, so, you know, as time went on, my parents, you know, you know, divorced and, were, and whatnot, and I went to school. And uh, I never thought too much about, you know, my career at that age. You know, uh, I went to high school. I still didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, I was like just working and girls and yeah, and being a teenager and acting stupid and crazy, whatever you know, I I don't, I don't think about that crap, man. So you know, right? You know, when you get close to girls, you get you know you get you know uh, at an early age, you get with women, and sometimes and what happened with me, I got er- got married early, mm-hmm. uh, like twenty three, twenty four, mm-hmm. and um, I was just still working jobs, what not, still trying to be the, the breadwinner, and and um. I just got tired of doing that, and so happened this this uh, this county sheriff office was have doing a mass hire, and mm-hmm. my ex wife at the time, hey, why don't you go apply for them? They doing a mass hire, and they're paying like way more you get in now. I was like, oh, okay, they get benefits and blah blah blah. I was like, oh, okay, go ahead and apply for. It. So that's that's how that started. So pretty much, mm-hmm. it was a mass hire, and I hey, I can do it. It's, it's this, it was in the jail, and that's how I started. This was back in 2007 when oh, I went seven, there. Huh? Uh, oh, seven. And when I went, and okay. I did the whole thing. And mm-hmm. after that, it was, it was history. <laughs> and I kept <laughs> going, man. I was, after I got into it, I was just like, okay, it's pretty nice. And you, know, you get to see uh-huh. different, you know, you experience different things and how the jail structure works and how people are inside the jail and how they yeah. act and how dangerous it is. And Right. It's it's it. I seen a lots of things, lots of crazy things, and mm-hmm. it's interesting that uh, how people are mm-hmm. when you see them in solitary, uh, the ones right. that are criminals. The one I mean, I, I I've been in contact and spoke to cold hard mm-hmm. blood that had recently you know, have have actually have murdered people, yeah. and yeah. uh they all give different types of vibes, energies. You got your pedophiles, you got them, you got your thieves, you got your, and you got your murderers, your homicide, they kill people and they give a different type of energy. And and, and you get, and you have to know, you have to deal with them totally different than you do right. with any other uh, inmate 
or, or prisoner in, in the prison than you was somebody just standing there for stealing cars or shoplifting or right. whatever right. any lesser crime and man it's interesting man how they how they see things and how you how they react yeah you know man that's that's interesting reginald because um you know i was i was thinking about what you were saying there and <clears throat> it sounds like so in 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 your time and in your journey starting in law enforcement over time uh you had to not only develop the skill to detect the type of vibe you get from say someone who is a pedophile versus someone who is um, a murderer you know or someone who's a shoplifter so there's they, they give off different vibes you not only have to be able to distinguish those vibes but and, 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 and know when they're, you know, when they're, when they're present, but it sounds like you also have to know how to, how to respond to the vibes to avert from a hostile situation. Is that, would that be accurate? Oh, definitely. You, okay. you can almost feel when, once you get enough experience in and know, mm -hmm. cause see jails are, are designed by units and wing, north wing, south wing, south, whatever they call different things, but usually they're their wings right. or north or south towers. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So as a officer there, you're, you're, you're usually you're assigned to the same tower wing every day. Once you come in your shift, you come in, you, you, um, you switch out with the next, the previous shift. You know, so right. you go ahead and get that. They come in, whoever is it, you, if they work in the morning, if they're from six to two, you come in, you know, you, you come in and uh, one, you go to roll call, go up there, you relieve your fellow officer, and they give you a pretty much a, a deep, they kind of debrief you what happened mm -hmm. during the morning, what was done, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. If any fights, any altercations, mm -hmm. any issues, any any maintenance issues, they tell you what's right. going on. So once you right. kind of get the wing, and they're going to test you to uh, mm -hmm. the inmates, the, the prisoners, they're going right. to test you. So they're going to mm -hmm. know if you're built for this or not, and they're going to break you. You're going to try to break you first, see if you can, <laughs> you see if you can make it, you know? Is that and, right? And yeah, they, yeah. yeah, they're like, they're like, they're like, uh, I hate to call them, I hate to use animals, but they can smell fear. It's like animals can smell blood sure, and can sure. fear. Oh, yeah. they, can, they can do the same right. thing. So they know okay. when you're scared and you're afraid and you're okay, they're going to they gonna do things to make your night hard, make your time yeah. their hard. But right, if right. you manage through and you, you know, you really hold your ground, they see that you're not nobody to play with, mm -hmm. then... After a while, you kind of get to know them, not necessarily befriend them. You could just kind of, just kind of know their ways. They kind of know your ways yeah. and know your vibe. So okay. after a period of time, you kind of know when something's about to happen. It's just, you just okay. know, you know, okay. it's like either it's too quiet or a certain person is acting a certain way yeah. or it's something, the vibe is different and you know something, something's about to happen. You know, you just like, yeah. something ain't right tonight. These guys are acting funny. Uh-huh. Something about just, to go down. Yeah, something about to go down. It's just an instinct. Yeah. You just yeah. have to have to learn. Yeah. No, that makes sense. No, that, that definitely makes sense. Uh, something you just mentioned a couple minutes ago there, Reginald, mm -hmm. uh, regarding, you know, like you said, they smell fear, they smell blood, you know, if they detect any any ounce of fear, you know, uh, in you. So you'll be tested. Um, and then, you know, putting your foot down, showing your ground you know, to say, hey, you know, I ain't one to be played with, you know, you pick the wrong guy on the wrong day, if you think you're going to try to, you know, get something out of me, uh, you know, just just showing that showing that uh, showing that um, uh, determination, right? Uh, <laughs> I'm a boxing fan, okay. And so yeah. uh, there's a there's this uh, legendary Hall of Fame trainer, named Teddy Atlas and uh, he, he, he's trained a lot of guys, mm -hmm. Michael Moore, he's trained uh, Mike Tyson, yeah. you know, all those guys. Right. Yeah. So he, he's from, he's from Brooklyn. He's from New York. And uh, he wrote a book uh, called Atlas um, from the streets to the ring, you know, a life about being a man. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and what you said, I think basically kind of wrapped in a bow, the point that, he was trying to make in that book, or at least a certain part of that book. Uh, in his youth, uh, Teddy, he was uh, he was a bad boy. You know, he ran with the, he ran with the the bad crowds, and and you know he'd steal things and and get in fights with other gangs and all that. Well, he he was sent to to do 
five years up in Rikers, right? Mm. And so he talked about he talked about um, the uh, importance of knowing the easy way out and the hard way out when it came to how you interact with other inmates in, uh, in, in at least in Rikers in his experience. Um, and he said, just like you, they'll test you. Yeah, you know, and and if they ha- if they detect any fear, they'll 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 get it in you. Oh yeah, you know, you know. And so he said, <laughs> he said, people think the easy way out is by complying and doing what they tell you. Like if they say, "Give me your pork chop," you know, and you give it to them, or they kick you around and then you just kind of not do anything and just keep going your own way. You know, people, he said, people think that's the easy way out. He said, that's not the easy way out. The the easy way out is the minute they try to mess with you or think about messing with you, with you, you crack them a good one. (laughs) Yeah. He, He said, you crack them a good one. Okay. And then they know from jump that you're not one to be messed with. Mm -hmm. He said, it's harder to do the other and not do anything. It's harder to do that. And and at first I was like, this is counterintuitive. And then I thought I started to see what he meant. Right. Uh, It's, it's harder not to do anything. Just give them your pork chop and let them push you around and you you just keep to yourself. You know, it's, it's, that's harder because as soon as they know they can get away with it, they're going to do it to you every day. And you have to, you have to tolerate it and do it and put up with it every single day. That's the harder route because it takes longer. You crack them a good one, then, you know, they know from the start, you're not one to be messed with. So uh, yeah. I, 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 I just wanted to share that, share that with you, Reginald. I didn't know your thoughts on that. If that was any part of that was accurate based off your professional experience. Yeah. Uh, with, well, with officers, um, if they know you're weak, they're just going to make you a hard time. They, they're just going to refuse to do things, make loud noises. Um, right. They're not going to respect you when you enter the dorm <clears throat> in the wing and, right. and they're not right. going to give you their attention when you're doing head count or whatever, right. or tell them to, to take it in for the night. They're not going to respect mm-hmm. you. They're not going to do anything. That's pretty much what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as that, as far as you being like a, you know, a weak officer, if they don't like you, they despise you. Mm-hmm. that's worse because if you one of the type of officers where you really are disliked mm-hmm. by prisoners or inmates, well, depends on where you're at, where you're at and where unit you're in. If there is most, usually there is gangs in there anyway. Most every, most units have some type of gang member. Right. Right. At least one or two, but most times they're pretty much stopped with gang members. So mm-hmm. they don't like you. They're going to find, they, you know, yeah. They'll find a way to get you. Yeah, they'll find a way. Not all that, that hasn't happened all the time. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you you really have to be really, 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 really disliked for them to actually do harm to you. Okay. Uh, I, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah. other than that, they'll just do stupid stuff. To, 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 mm-hmm. You know, to get you out of there or complain. Now, inmates, prisoners itself, yeah, they can do that. Yeah, you. They want if <laughs> they don't want to get punked out, so right. somebody take their plate, their sack their food yep. they, they best yep. better try to defend themselves now granted you might get your you know ass handed to you but sure, sure. then it's more likely it's not gonna happen again because they know you're not scared right. to take a but take a whooping and you're not scared to fight back if yep. you yep. are one of the weak links and you're gonna let them take stuff where you're gonna get abused not only by that guy but the whole dorm and you're gonna not gonna have you know they're gonna take your stuff. Yeah. They're gonna lock you out yeah. the room. They're not gonna let you take Every a shower. Day. Oh yeah, you gonna have Every a hard time. Day. They gonna threaten you. They yeah. gonna be <clears throat> at night when you find to sleep. They gonna be banging on the doors. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. Calling yeah. your name, calling your business. I'm gonna get yeah. all kind of stuff. You might even get raped. So, yeah. wow, <clears throat> wow, man, yeah. So it get it gets real in there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It gets serious, real, man. Yeah. So okay, so this started in '07. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and how how long were you in law enforcement then, Reggie? From there, uh, a total. See, I worked for two different, three different um, law enforcement um, mm-hmm. departments. Uh, the first was a sheriff office. I was there for five years uh, as a as a correction officer. Then I went to police department. Did that for a year, 
Okay. Um, and then I went back to another sheriff office and I was there for five years. So in total 11 years, um, 13, this year will make 11. So 2020, so 2007 to 2020. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I learned, I learned both the jail environment, mm-hmm. uh, our, our inmates, uh, I worked, not nationally worked, but I uh, took prisoners, took inmates to, j- to prisons, not jails, prisons, because the difference now, because some people oh, yeah. think it's one the same. <clears throat> so right. they think jails and prisons are they're different entities. So uh, I worked in the jail. Mm-hmm. I took prisoners to prisons, state prisoners, prison camps. Co- and Correction and facilities, right? Yeah, correction facilities. Okay. And, and brought them from there. Uh, worked the streets. I made arrests. I mm-hmm. did the whole court thing and all that, and served warrants and served civil papers and okay. uh, pulled people over and arrested people and pulled my weapon and never had, okay. didn't shoot nobody now. So everybody, listen, I have not shot anybody. Okay. No, that's good. That's <laughs> I haven't good. shot anybody. All right, no. don't. That's something you don't want to do. You know, right, right. Uh, uh, no matter what you guys have seen on television over the last few years, or since forever um Mm -hmm. it's never good for the officer to have to shoot someone if he didn't have to now if he had to because self-defense or the guy had a gun then we're good but you you don't most time well it's very rare media makes it seem like it happens a lot it doesn't okay so okay Okay. i never had shooting one but i had to put my weapon quite a few times and you did okay and then and shots were fired around my Mm, area a few times yeah. so, but other than that yeah. i was just i was fine with it <laughs> wow yeah. man man yeah. that is that, that that is something so you had you had uh pretty good visibility and exposure to uh different different sides of law enforcement right not just uh in corrections mm-hmm. uh, but also um and and let me know if there's a better term for this but like a neighborhood officer you know um for um, you know, where you, where you have a beat and uh, you pull people over, you serve warrants, you right. make arrests, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and you're, you're, you're in contact with the community. Mm-hmm. Um, from that standpoint, you've had, you, you, you've served as an officer in that capacity as well. Exactly. All, everything you say, yes, sir. Community mm-hmm. warrants, pulling people over. Oh yeah. Um, the man, man, it's, the, the, the minority part or the hood or the ghetto as we call it i heard different beats in there i had beats mm-hmm. in the more middle class upper class neighborhoods mm-hmm. um every and they and the thing about it between the middle the middle class people and their edu- yeah. they're educated differently so they act differently sure you know? sure and yeah. they always most times it's not all the time but sometimes when you in a middle class <clears throat> or upper class neighborhood mm-hmm. and you pull a person over for speeding or ticket or run a stoplight, whatever, or whatever reason, mm-hmm. a lot of times the upper class people, middle class people always know somebody that, that works in law enforcement. Oh, I got you. my brother or my yeah. uncle or my, yeah. oh, oh, do you know my cousin? Do you know my, he's the chief <laughs> or he's the major? And you know, right. they kind of throw that out there. And, 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 of course. and, and sometimes, sometimes, mm-hmm that works for them because you will sometimes officer i have and it wasn't haven't happened to me but i have no officer right. that has got a call from mm-hmm. a superior to say hey let that person go okay. uh oh yeah especially they're like politicians like mayors and stuff like that really? mayors yeah mayor like, like yeah man mayors and mm-hmm. uh they get like you know people in the political world oh yeah, yeah they get they act a fool just like anyone else and they've been pulled over and drugs and DUI and yeah, yeah. oh yeah, all they gotta do make a call and, and you get a call sometimes. So I have heard the officer get a call sometime. They'll mm. and the, the superior say, Yeah, you let him go. Oh my gosh. Talk yeah. about abuse of power and just <clears throat> just really, really leveraging those connections they have with people mm-hmm. um uh in, in in a in a in a less than ideal way. I guess it's ideal in their mind because they're being let off the hook, but you know, um for, for the public to know that things like this go on, man, is uh, yeah, that's, quite yeah. unsettling. Yeah, you know? yeah, the public, the yeah. public, if they knew mm-hmm. what officers have seen and got to deal with, and how many times they have to turn their head because their superiors, right? How hits, frequent? How frequently? Because yeah. their superiors yeah. said so. 
they'll be surprised. Yeah. And the reason why, they'll be like, what? Yeah, what? Yeah, it's a good reason why, <laughs> because they, will, they won't have a job if they don't let this important person go. Yeah. Right, and meanwhile, meanwhile, some guy, some some seventeen year old in the hood, he he missed the court date, and so there's a warrant, and mm-hmm. he's going to jail because he didn't make that court date, you know. But he mm-hmm. don't know nobody, mm-hmm. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know. <laughs> so it's a, mm-hmm. uh, I guess you know that 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 kind of knowing that happens there, you know, and then also knowing that some middle class person is getting off from a DUI because they're uncle is the mayor or something mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know it's uh it's very unsettling man but, oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah hey, hey look man i wanted to ask you yeah. two questions okay um regarding uh how you served in law enforcement because this has been on my mind for quite some time right okay and uh hopefully the listeners can benefit from this and, and understand where you're coming from and then from there i want to go into uh in, into your new business if you don't mind no problem all right, cool. So here's the, here's the question I have. Do you feel that there is a, quote, sweet spot or a balance that you have to strike, okay, uh, in your experience in law enforcement when dealing with criminals, inmates, and, 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 and all, you know, th- those, those types of individuals where, you know, you, you, you have to show that, hey, you know, I'm an easygoing guy, but hey, I don't take no crap. Um, uh, you know, it's like, don't take me for a fool because I can tell when you're trying to screw me over, but at the same time, you have a problem, you want to talk about it, you can come see me or, um, you know, you, uh, you act right, then we cool, Mm -hmm. you know? So, so, I mean, is, is there a balance that you have to strike so that, you know, you're respected, but not disliked? Yeah. Um. That's a lot of things to go with that. Like Judge Matthews said, uh, tough love. Yeah. Okay. You got to have a little bit of that. Okay. You also have to use ger- verbal, what we call verbal judo. Yep. Um, And you also have to know your, you have to know the people. You have to know the people that you're working around the area. Okay. You have to know what area you're in. Are you in a, a middle class, upper class type of area? Uh, right. part of town or you know mm-hmm. uh, in the city like you know new york or atlanta or in downtown atlanta or la you know you're right. more on the south side where there's more minorities so yeah. you have to know deal with you gotta know your environment you have to know how okay. to talk to different ones at the different you know different levels because one okay. the way you talk to the way i would talk to a uh uh people in a low income area mm-hmm. i wouldn't talk to a person in the upper income area. Okay. Because the upper income people upper income people environment yeah. are gonna be a little more educated. They're right. gonna have money to get their stuff out of jail. They're, they're gonna have, you know, lawyers. They're gonna some most most of the time they're gonna know the law. They're gonna be a little bit more mouthy about, you know, whatever, this is not fair, whatever. They, they they're gonna have a little right, bit right. more. They're gonna have a little more leverage to so you just can't talk to them in kind of way like they're, they're like they're, you know, an idiot. Now the right. lower income people they're a bit more aggressive and they're very, so you gotta, you gotta almost talk to them on their level. Okay. okay you, uh, uh, what, what say, you know, young, young guy or whatever, it's just doing something stupid or he, you, you pulled him over or you arrest him. And he's been this acting crazy or cursing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gonna have to curse at him too. You gotcha. gonna have to really talk to him. Like, yeah. like, like that's your child. I got you. Because if you go yeah. like, hey man, this sir, if you be Mr. Mr. Rogers, right, you're gonna right. you're gonna you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna no, lose I got that you. battle. Yeah. Okay. Lose. Be Mr. Rogers in Beverly Hills or you know, right the the multi million dollar neighborhoods and, right. and the upper class. Be Mr. Rogers to them. But not in the hood. Not in the hood. You gotta no. be you you're gonna have to be <laughs> like dolomite to them. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be Sammy, Sammy, Samuel L. Jackson. You're gonna talk yeah. to them like that. Cause that's yeah. the only way they only they, that's the only thing they know. Right. You know, that that's type how, of that type they, of language. Right, right. Mm-hmm. It's the only way you can get them to respond or get mm-hmm. them to, to 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 do or comply, mm-hmm. you know, in whatever it is that you're you're asking or demanding of them. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. well that makes a lot of sense, man. And 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 the second question I had for you, Reginald, is um what uh 
what have you learned of yourself uh, in, in, in your journey thus far in law enforcement? Any, anything you've learned of yourself either early in your career or halfway through your career or even recently, um, you know, that, uh, that, that you, you may not have been as aware of about who you are as a man, as a human being, um, you know, for law enforcement? Yeah, well, law enforcement taught me over there. It took a while, but law enforcement taught me a lot about being present, uh, showing your presence, right. being having control, uh, being firm, right. um, being, uh, having, being able to have the right people skills. Uh, Cause I you know growing up, I was a shy kid and I, never, I kept to myself and I still kind of do now. Cause I like, you know, I'm a more laid back chill guy. But once, you know, I got, once in law enforcement, it kind of broke me out of that. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, you really gotta, you know, you gotta, you really gotta to assert yourself. Yeah. Situations. And you talk, uh, situations gonna happen now, like traffic tickets, you know, that's, you know, arrest and you know, register somebody for DUI or pull somebody for a traffic ticket or, you know, easy stuff or somebody acting simple stuff, small stuff, small crimes. But right, right. when you go to a situation where somebody has blown their head off mm-hmm. uh, and a family member is there, when you go to a situation when a family member has died right. in the house, right. when you go to a situation when a female has been stabbed by her boyfriend, or husband, and she got wounds and the blood everywhere. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to control that situation, and, you, and, it's, and it's gonna make it's gonna make you or break you. You're either gotcha. gonna learn from it, or you're going to not learn from it. Right. It's right. gonna, you know, and you gotta be able to control yourself, and, and you gotta, you really gotta have a short term memory in law enforcement, as far as your gotcha. emotions and right. and and dealing with things, because you let it stuff get to you, mm-hmm. get to you things happen you know stress and uh well, anger yeah. it and, affects and your performance it affects your performance at work and you be found like you're yeah. distressed and anger and you're upset all the time and you think everybody is a criminal and all black people are bad and all and Mexicans <laughs> are are, are, are right. need to go back to Mexico and they're all here for, working for free and uh, I mean you're gonna have oh, all kind man. of prejudice thoughts yeah, right and yeah. biased thoughts yeah. And if you let those things get to you, and unfortunately, the some of the examples we have seen in the news, some not all, but some is, is an example of that. A lot of sure. those officers have biases yeah. and prejudice, yeah. uh, and, yeah. and within them, because oh well, for sure, you yeah. know, because their yeah. upbringing and once right. they got law enforcement, they didn't know how to, they didn't know how to, die, you know, pretty much lose that memory, lose that yeah. memory, yeah, and know yeah. how yeah. and know how to deal with it. And, and, accept uh, for, and accept it for what it is. I you got know. you. Yeah, I got you. No, I appreciate you sharing that, man. I mean, as soon as you mentioned that, that was crystal clear in my mind. Uh, the do, the the dots started to connect, you know, when it came to uh, some of the recent events that you hear, um, you know, with in law enforcement mm-hmm. uh, responding to certain uh, situations uh, that, that you've heard of in the news. So, uh, yeah, so, so I, I, I definitely appreciate you sharing that, Reginald. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about your recent uh, exploration into becoming a business owner, okay? Uh, uh, share with us a couple things. Uh, number one, um, you know, the, describe your business, uh, what, what business you're in, and, and, and number two, what inspired you to, uh, to, 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 to make that transition, right? Uh, from law enforcement into owning your own business, or are you doing a, are you doing a little double dip type thing, you know? Um, well, as far as businesses, I, even though, you know, I had plenty of jobs like many other people, mm-hmm. but I have always had that entrepreneur spirit, you know, even when I was working in between jobs or any my, even with law enforcement, I was always trying to find a side hustle, you know, mm-hmm, as I've been mm-hmm. doing that for, for since I was my twenties, <laughs> you know, you and me both, you oh, know, yeah. all things, all kind of uh, multi-level marketing and strategies and stock market and buying this and websites and eat, oh, right. everything. I mean, I, I don't wasted thousands of dollars, man, probably <laughs> over the, you know, over, over my years, you know, 39. So sure, sure. I know I spent a lot. Um, so now I, I, I decided to 
you know, hey, I'm going to do something that I think is easy that I can do. Uh, and um, for me, I'm, I'm born in Atlanta. I was, raised, I was born in Georgia. I was raised in Atlanta. I'm good with people. I believe I can negotiate with people. I believe people can, I believe I'm able to help give people, earn my trust by how I deal with people, being in law enforcement. Right. See, because law enforcement, you got to earn, you have uh, to know how to earn a person's trust. Yes. You have to know how to calm a situation. You right. have to know how to have, you have to have empathy for for people, even if they did something wrong. You know? Sure, sure. Even if yeah. they did something, they, they could have went, like, killed his wife. And right. you still gotta have empathy because you don't know what he was going through. You know what what caused him to do that. You know, right. you know. Right. So you gotta have empathy for the good and the bad because you don't know I what's see. on that person's mind. You don't know what they you don't know what they're going through. What caused them to act that way? So I that empathy you. part played a part in me. Like you know what, I think I can mm-hmm. start my own business. So hey, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna start me a delivery business, man. I'm gonna get me a truck and. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, and it, I'm telling you, this, this, this thought, this feeling, I always had the the feeling, I always had the idea, but I didn't never know. I always went to, I always had so many things I was doing, and I never could narrow it down to the one particular thing that I liked. So I just went ahead and just, you know what? I'm gonna go on leap of faith. I'm just gonna, I have something I think I can do. And right. I made that. I made a decision. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do delivery, man. I'm gonna I'm get me a truck and start yeah. a delivery business. I'm gonna go, you know, just <laughs> I'm gonna just drop off and pick up and deliver stuff from all over uh, the state of all uh, Atlanta area. Whatnot? Why can't I do that? Because you know, because pretty much my last role was uh, I was a transport deputy, so yeah. I would take person to take inmates uh, to different prisons and pick them up from jail, local jails, local jails in the area uh and taking the prisons and correction facilities and drop them off pick them up drop them off pick them up all all around the state of georgia so mm-hmm. i said well you know i got it pretty much you know uh i can drive because <laughs> i mean you talk yeah, about yeah. driving <laughs> driving all day you got ah, georgia's a big state big state right <laughs> from <laughs> 15 out for at times, I remember at times me and my partner, we will, we will be on the road for 14 hours straight by ourselves in a van with like three or four, if not five or six to eight bodies in our van. Oh, and right, we're right, going right. from one part of the Georgia to like, say like Macon, yeah. Albany, Savannah, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Columbus, coming yeah. back all, all around the Georgia. We'll make all the different, we go to all different jails and prisons, picking up these people by ourselves. Man. Which is not supposed to be. It ain't, that's not supposed right. to happen because something can happen. Oh, something could happen. Yeah. Can happen. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I can yeah. get sick or you know, blow anything, but that's yeah. not how it's supposed to be done. But, you know, we had, it was me and him, we had no choice. But by law, I'm not, I don't know if by law, but I know by Georgia state DOT law or something. Okay. A certain amount of hours. Even yeah. with truck drivers, they're only supposed to drive like I think ten hours or something mm-hmm. like that at one time, mm-hmm. eight hours, and they got to take a rest. Yeah. So we were driving long hours, man. Yeah, no, those are long hours, man. In fact, I think I I, I thought at least as of five years ago, the federal federal law was ten hours. Yeah. Uh, for, for those truck drivers. Yeah. And 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 man, so it sounds like it sounds like Reginald, um, those uh, those attributes that you've uh, that you have uh, refined and and carved and shaped and endurance. perfected, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and endurance, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, over the years in law enforcement, right? Mm-hmm. Those those attributes, um, they they allowed you and position you to start your own delivery business because you have to earn people's trust, mm-hmm. like you said. Um, you have to have empathy, mm-hmm. and 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 you know, being in transport for, you know, transporting inmates and so forth. Well, you've done that. So, you know, you've been in, in, a, in a van for hours. <laughs> so, right. Uh, right. And, and, and see, my background is talent development. So in our talent development world, we call these transferable skills, right? <laughs> so, <There> you go. <laughs> yeah, that, that you have uh, over 
pro that you picked up and learned and had and perfected in law enforcement that you're able to apply to your business, man. I love that. How, how long, how, how long have you started this business or you've been, been in the delivery business? Uh, the idea, the idea came, well, I, I kind of talked to a friend of mine. He, she, he drives mm-hmm. trucks. So I, I was go I was talking to him about it like early this year, like I think around either before COVID or right around COVID time, I think. Okay. Um, so I kind of let it go. You know, I was like, you know what? I might, whatever, it sounded good, but I was caught in the same trap, uh, the same doubt, the same hesitation that a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people that want to be entrepreneurs, people that want to yeah. be, have their own business. Yeah. And they still, right, in the current time, they have a current job where they may have a family to support. Right, they right. got benefits, they got a salary. They have that safety net around them, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. they got they, they got a job to report to, they know you can get a steady, pay, steady income. So That's right. that part was like, eh, it was lingering in there. I didn't know what it was. Like, oh, what is this? I don't know. I didn't know what it was doubt. I didn't know what it was that they kept having me have, has a, have any uh, hesitation, excuse me, hesitation mm-hmm. where I was mm-hmm. like, oh man. I, I, I just, I don't think about it. I, you know, I don't, whatever. I was, you know, and I kept f- fooling around with other stuff and other things, other ideas and writing yeah. things down and, and, and buying uh, like Ty Lopez and, and buying other, uh, uh, you know, these big uh, IT, pro, uh, these, these multi-millionaire guys and, sure, you, sure. Know, you, you know, that, that has things we can buy and programs and whatnot. And I was getting looking to that, things like that. So what's a bunch mm-hmm. of foolery, all right? Which is, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure you can make money, but for me, it, it should have been foolery, all right? Cause I didn't, I, I was scared. I was afraid, right? I was right, afraid right. to take that leap. Cause I didn't know, I didn't know what it was. So it almost took an act of God where God had to pretty much put a lightning bolt up my ass and listen. Yeah, yeah. All right. So <laughs> obviously you're not paying attention because you feeling the way you feeling the way you feeling. Mm-hmm. You're 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 you are not you're not having time. You're not showing faith. You're not showing faith, right? Yeah, yeah. This job is, you know, even though it's rewarding, you make good friends, you may you use around good people, but look how you're feeling, look how right. you're acting, look how you're thinking, right? Right. So that's right. Why are you still there, boy? If you, <laughs> you know, if you want to do something else, you need to do yeah, something. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but you need to do something. All right. So you need to make a move. Man. So I, I, I just say, you know what? This is mm-hmm. November <laughs> last month. And I said, you know what? Let's walk in. And they said, I, I, I'm done. I, just, I'm I done. didn't. That was it, man. I, I was, it was just, you know, when I, the thing I say with, with, a job and working. If you had a job you like and it's rewarding, you like it, mm-hmm. and it's not stressful, mm-hmm. you know, and you and you like working because they not everybody built to be entrepreneurs. Only a small percentage of people in the world are built to be entrepreneurs. Right. Everyone else likes their safety net. They like they clock out. They they yeah. they are they're employees. They are meant to be employees. They don't want to take risks they don't they, they that steady income right. that 401k that whatever they saving that pension that yeah. health insurance those benefits that's all that stuff is that's that's what they prefer their security that's their security yeah, yeah nothing yeah. wrong with that you know nothing wrong right. with that at all because right. being an entre- being an entrepreneur is risky business okay it's risky <laughs> especially if you have a family to support all oh, right of course. Yeah, so yeah. you know i knew that going in and that was part of the reason why another reason probably why i was probably like a little hesitant because i got two two little girls and mm-hmm. oh man i just can't do this cause i'm yeah. gonna get in trouble i'm gonna support them and then their mothers and mm-hmm. and, 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 and and you know whatever i'm getting <laughs> i don't know so yeah i pretty much said f it i'm gonna do this there you go i don't know what i'm gonna do yet right i'm gonna do it and i did it man and i took a leap of faith bro and mm-hmm. i did it Mm-hmm. And I feel good about it. Uh, I had to make sure, and I want the audience to, to to understand too. When you make a decision, wherever decision you make, never base your decision totally off your emotions at that time. Right. At that time, whatever you're feeling about your current situation, 
whether it's in relationships, yep. whether it's with uh, your job, whether it's, you know, your business, whatever, right. never base it totally off emotion. Cause you base right. it totally off emotion. You'll make irrational decisions. Oh, of course. Of you course. Know? So yeah, I, I made sure I had to make sure mm-hmm. and think what I was and also, and I had a plan on my head. Okay. If I do this today, right. What I'm gonna do. All right. I need to make calls. I need to right. think, think, right. think, and really prove to myself that I'm not BSing myself. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I once I proved to myself that I want BS myself, mm-hmm. I went ahead and said, "All right, I'm done. See you. Here's your stuff." But <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds like you you've you've had to do a lot of soul searching. Yeah. And and making sure you're not BSing yourself, making sure that you know if you take this leap of faith, you at least have some calculated risks and right. and, and uh, some plan of direction. You know, uh, once you make that transition. Uh, and and I'm so so glad you shared that with us, Reginald, because mm-hmm. uh, I know, like you said, you know something's keeping you from making that jump. Something's keeping you from going in that direction to be mm-hmm. the entrepreneur because you knew in your heart of hearts you've always had that spirit, right? Mm-hmm. You said it earlier in our discussion here, and and but something's holding you back, and 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 you were you were um, humble enough and uh, self aware enough of yourself to take that hard look in the mirror and say, okay, what in the world is wrong with me? Um, Like God, like, like shoving that lightning up your butt, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, that lightning bolt and, 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 and taking that hard look and saying, okay, what is holding me back? Why am I scared? What is it that I'm holding on to? And, and after taking that hard look, that, that empowered you, it sounds like it empowered you to, walk on into that office the next day and say, Hey, I'm mm-hmm. done. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going in a different direction. And, 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 and to me, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to steal your words a little bit, but to me, those very acts that you did right there, Reginald, it sounds like you manned up to greatness. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. <laughs> so, so that, 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 that kind of leads me to want to talk about your podcast, man, man enough okay. to greatness. Uh, What's it all about, man? And, 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 and can you share look, anecdotes of your journey that has inspired you, if any, that has inspired you to, to, to launch a podcast of this name? Uh, man of Greatness in the beginning stages was basically me copying, well, I hate copying because um, everybody, I guess it is everybody copies everybody to mm-hmm. create something you know, better, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. upgrades. So I was into a podcast that was kind of similar to uh, similar to mine. Um, it was more motivational directly for men. So I said, right. you know, and I, I and at the time I needed that because I was listening to it like when I was transporting, I was going to different prisons and corrections. I was going like two hour trips, right, right. one way, you know. So I would I'll pop the podcast on and listen to this podcast and uh mm-hmm. and uh, I think his name was Andrew Ferby or something like that. I cannot remember the name of his podcast. Okay. But uh he had a podcast that he pretty much, you know, was dedicated for men only and he, he was a mo- and he brought guests on and different mm-hmm. backgrounds of guests and mm-hmm. relationship guests and uh therapists and all type of guests that he was talk about, you know, and it was for men. Right. So I said, right. man. I like that. And I got an idea and I spoke to one of the coaches with the, with the actual podcast and we were talking for a while. We kind of talked here and now here, you know, for a while. Mm-hmm. And you know what I said, what I'm, I can create my own podcast. And I, and, and I went ahead and did it. <laughs> so I bought, I didn't know, had, had no idea how to, how to create a podcast. <laughs> didn't know what to buy. I just Google what I need to do. And Amazon right. bought a microphone. I still had the same microphone to this day that I'm talking to you on it now. Is that right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I still got it. And uh, I just stopped, you know, I did what I need to do. It was almost like creating a, it was creating another, man, it was like almost, it almost it's almost like re- recreating yourself. You, you're creating yeah, yeah another part of you all right another 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 mm, something else about it's because it, a podcast is basically the person that created podcast mm-hmm. it's a reflection of them okay oh it's sure, a reflection sure. Of, of about them about uh, them as a person as a human being about right. what they they're what they want to 
uh, give to people. So right. and their pain and their yes. suffering and their greatness yes. and their love and their hate and every, yes. all that stuff is bought into it, you know, all, all, and they want to, to, to express that and they want to give that right. the good stuff out to people. And because for me, when I created my podcast and I started uh, podcasting, I was doing shows, they were just myself. Right, and I right. say, well, it's not gonna last long because I I don't have that much to say. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I need some guests. So I just went ahead and I got on Google and researched yeah. podcasts, and I, I ended up getting to this podcast website where it had podcasts, yeah. people I can invite on my show. I reached out to them, mm-hmm. bam, where mm-hmm. you go, and that it mm-hmm. came to that, and and it kept on transforming, kept transforming, and it originally was for podcasts for men. So now since I have so many different diverse people over my, because I've been in my pockets five, almost five years now. And wow. I have, I have had so many different diverse people on my show, right? right and right. women and, 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 and therapists and doctors and attorneys and lawyers and politicians yeah. and e-commerce yeah. multi-millionaires and real estate millionaires and all kinds of people. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. It transformed. I said, you know what? I, I can't really have this dedicated to, towards men because I'm 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 having so many different type of people on here where right. I need to spread the love. So now it's it mm-hmm. turned into a podcast for entrepreneurs where entrepreneurs who can pretty much tell their story about real entrepreneurship, how they started, okay. what kept them motivated, their ups right. and downs. Right. And and what and and give advice and tell their story. Mm-hmm. And yes. that's what it is. And I want people to be you know, able to relate to yes. regular people. Yes. And a lot of them, and majority of them started, you know, just like you and I, right. average person. And some, you know, can't, some already had, you know, probably wealth from parents. And that's cool too. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, but majority of them, and majority, I mean, a lot of them are still average, you know, blue collar workers. It's just that right. their profession, you know, they just do great things with it, you know? Gotcha. So, and that's what it is, man. That is, that is bring people home, man. They, they spread the love and, mm. uh, I make sure I'm, I make sure I try to make sure that what they have to say and what they bring to my podcast is always relatable. So even if it's not their business, right. it's them as a person. Right. Has and to what they mean. had to be meaningful and relatable. Yeah. For yes. both men, women, young, old, black, white, Asian, yes. Chinese, Native yes. American, Puerto Rican, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And mm-hmm. that's the thing I want to help people to get them inspired because you got too much crap and nonsense on media that's this disheartening and mm-hmm. people need something. If you can say one, I'm my thing is if you can just say one, you can change one person's outlook. Mm-hmm. On their in their life, you you just you know you're a winner. Yeah, you know. Oh, of course, of yeah. course. No, that man, Reginald, that's beautiful, man. I mean, yeah, uh, that like you said, it. This is your podcast. Uh, you you share your triumphs, your successes, your failures, your tragedies, your tears, your blood, mm-hmm. your sweat. Uh, that podcast is your signature, right? Uh, it, it's it's your signature of who you are. And my, and my therapy. And my therapy. And it was my. Ther- it was my. It was my personal. Let me tell you something, Harvard. Mm-hmm. That was my personal. Th- I was. I the last few years I've been through a lot, and you know, and yeah. and, and, and you know, divorces and separations and jobs and stress right. and health right. issues. You know, cancer scares mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. podcast, me talking to those people. Was still my therapy. I will do my pot. I mean, I create the podcast for 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 the world, for other right, people right. to hear. Yeah. But it was also my personal therapy. I tell you, I you know, I, I'm telling yeah. you, man, because I yeah. I spoke to so many. I'm mean, I supposed to psych psychotherapists and yeah. relationship yeah. therapists, right. you know, and they said, man, y'all, why? I spoke to a um, I interviewed a uh, a rabbi. Yeah. Once he was talking about uh intimacy and stuff and love, man, he yeah. sounded like somebody you he sounded like somebody in the Bible when you talk to when you, when you hear him talk, 
you know yeah yeah he's, he's yeah. sound old and he's old but he's he has wisdom in his voice when you if you hear him talk i got but, you yeah, yeah man so yeah it was my my podcast was my and still is my therapy yeah yeah you know um man that's uh i love hearing that i love love hearing that reginald uh because you know some people it takes a true man of character a true person of character when when they know they're going through some rough things in their lives with uh, say the loss of a loved one or um, health issues or divorces broken homes those sorts of things um, it's easy to quote unquote self medicate <laughs> yourself mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. an, as a form of escape you know that could be considered or at least some people consider that their therapy but you've chose you've chose the the, the pr productive route a productive route that was um, of of meaningful uh, not only adding value to yourself but adding value to others and 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 it's 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 a route that you've chosen for your therapy that is isn't harmful you know what I mean right right yeah yeah, yeah. man right. that's a hundred percent that's a hundred percent so Reginald where can the listeners check out your podcast um all right guys you can find a link to my to my uh, podcast uh you can go to ig my ig page is the awakened king the awakened king on ig uh you can follow me on uh what's that uh, linkedin at reggie dillard instagram um what's it what they, what they call the thing the handle reggie dillard Oh, yeah. <laughs> or uh -huh. Reggie J. It should be Reggie J. That's my handle. Uh, -huh. uh LinkedIn Reginald Diller or Reggie Diller. You once you you switch my picture, it'll pop up. And okay. my website is at www.namagreatness.com. And uh um, gotcha. if you guys gotcha. want to email me and uh want and feel that you have what it takes to be on the Mammal Greatness, or you can email me directly at Reginald at mammagreatness.com. Wonderful, wonderful. There you have it, everyone. These are the links and the ways to get in touch with Reginald Dillard to hear his podcast, to hear the amazing guests that he has on his show, and to connect with him if you feel you have what it takes to be on Man Up Greatness. I'll make sure and have all of these links in the episode show notes so that the listeners can, uh, can access these and connect with you as quickly as possible, Reginald. Man, I've had a great, great time talking with you and rapping with you about your journey, man, and things that you've learned, uh, things that you're doing to help make the world a better place. I really appreciate you being on the show, Reginald. Oh, you're welcome, man. Very welcome. I'm glad to be here. Uh... I had fun, man. Thank you. Oh, no, absolutely. So now we're going to go to a segment I like to call Three for the Road. And okay. Reginald, in Three for the Road, I asked my guests three original, thought-provoking, um, random questions that I challenge you to answer in five words or less. So what do you think? You think you may be up for it? Let's see. Let's see what we got. All let's right. Go. All right. Let's go. All right. Question number one for Three for the Road. Question one. If you were to give any advice to neighborhood citizens for better connecting with law enforcement, what would that advice be? Just talk. Just talk. Love Just it. Talk. Just talk. Two words. You, you had three. You had you had two words and some to spare. <laughs> <laughs> Just talk. I like that because that says so much with just two words. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Reginald, question number two. Question two. Okay. Name a tropical island if you could like retire to um, and just just do exclusively your podcast and delivery business um name an island that you would love to go to to live and to pursue those two endeavors bermuda bermuda okay mm -hmm. all right 
you know, I don't think I've ever been to Bermuda, but I've been to um, Aruba. And Aruba, I believe, is 27 miles long. And <laughs> I'm just thinking, man, of all the deliveries and the driving in the van around the yeah. state of Georgia that you've yeah. done, yeah. you know, uh, making deliveries on an island would be nothing for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a few. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's a few islands that I do like, but Bermuda is all this uh -huh. one I kind of, you know, I always wanted to go to. So it's a, it's a, I have the Greek Isles and all that, but mm. I can, you know, I don't know the names of the islands, but I know Bermuda. <laughs> Hey, hey, it all sounds beautiful to me right now, man, in the wintertime, you know, yes, especially with this pandemic, you know, want to go out and, and check out some, uh, some scenic places. All right. Yeah. Question number three for three for the road. Question three. All right. Okay. Um, fill in the blank. Respect. In law enforcement, means hmm. respect in law enforcement means. Hmm. Well, means that you. Well, now nah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get more words there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Respect in law enforcement means empower, being empowered. Being empowered. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I like that. And you know what, man? Because I like you so much, Reginald, I'm going to give you a fourth one. So for you, it's fourth okay. of the road. Okay. <laughs> if you're Go up ahead. for it. Go ahead. All right. Okay, here we go. What is the chain of command? chain of command in law enforcement or in, in life in, in, to my law enforcement or in general in any context you want to put it chain of command well that will probably i'll have to the simplest way i can say that is it starts with you and it goes up top it okay it starts with you Yep. And from there it goes up top. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Reginald Dillard, four for the road. <laughs> First time ever. I have never done that with a host. Hey, or with a guest. I, feel you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah, no problem at all, man. Reginald, once again, man, thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And, and I want to thank all of the listeners, all of you for tuning in and listening to this great episode with Reginald Dillard. Like I said, we'll have his website, his podcast link, his Instagram and LinkedIn handles as direct links on the episode show notes so that you can directly connect with Reginald and listen to his podcast, Man Up Greatness, Man Up to Greatness. All right. Well, everyone, once again, thanks for tuning into the show. A quick reminder to subscribe and leave a short review if you like what you hear. If any of this adds value to your life, and you can apply it, please leave us a short review and share how that has impacted your life. And for those of you who want a VIP heads up notification of upcoming guests on episodes that have yet to be released, you can get that first, first preview of these upcoming episodes simply by subscribing to our mailing list at roadtorediscovery.com. That's road, the number two, rediscovery.com. The Road to Rediscovery, it's a movement, a revolution. And guess what? You are now part of it. We're all roadies on this journey of life. And it feels so good to have you on the road with me. Thanks again for listening. We'll chat again soon. The Road to Rediscovery is an AJ Shark production.